attitudes of ancient people towards the natural environment and the landscape were often completely different from ours. Two fundamental concepts must be borne in mind. The first is that ancient man was a religious man. And the second is that religion was bound up with the natural cycles and that natural cycles were bound up with power. It is essential to take account of them when engaged in fieldwork and also, more simply, when visiting an archaeological site, because these aspects are visible in the landscapes. Typical indeed. The monuments studied by archaeoastronomy are immersed in landscapes which were of special, sacred significance for the people who built them. Therefore, it is important to look around carefully, trying to understand how the ancient configuration of the surroundings might have been. Furthermore, we must try to imagine the landscape and the sky as a wall, since in this way ancient people perceived the cosmos around them. Once we are sufficiently acquainted with the landscape and the way monuments were placed in it, we can search for alignments, any feature of the ancient projects which seem to point deliberately towards a specific direction. Examples are Axis of temples for example, here we are in the funerary temple of Hatshepsut at Der al-Bari, Egypt. Entrances of tombs like the tumulus of Mysore in the Orkney Island, or main roads of ancient towns like the so-called Street of the Dead in Teotihuacan, Mexico, and so on. Measuring alignments is not enough, however, we must make an accurate relief of the visible horizon. In fact, we need both azimuth and altitude to identify the position of a celestial object, that is, declination. Further, prominent features at the horizon may be of cultural interest, such as sacred mountains, special profiles, or other interrelated monuments. Now you are ready to watch a tennis site you visit with an archaeastronomer eye. It is possible to measure alignments and horizonates with high-precision survey instruments, the theodolite or total station, and the GPS. However, also with very cheap and simple instruments, it is possible to have a clear idea of what happens. To measure azimuths, we can use the magnetic compass. Due to the earth magnetic field, the compass aligns in a direction called magnetic north, which is a rough indication of the geographical north. The deviation of the direction of magnetic north with respect to the geographical north or magnetic declination depends on the position of the observer as well as on time. Fortunately, we can correct this systematic error by using the data kindly provided on the web by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States. It is important to remember that the compass is sensible also to local perturbations for instance, the presence of iron bars or electrical wires. To measure the altitude of the visible horizon in relation to all the azimuths of interest, we can use another simple instrument, the clinometer. The clinometer is essentially a goniometer used vertically, and as such, it allows to measure angular heights. Recall, in fact, that the hill, which is 100 meters high, but is very near, can block the view much more than a distant mountain. Finally, the use of virtual globe softwares, like for instance Google Earth, can be very useful to check the reliability of our results. In particular, the ruler option can be used to measure distances and azimuths. The elevation profile option can be used to measure horizon aids.